Many Japanese can't believe it's been that long since that day. A magnitude 9 earthquake struck the northeast 18 months ago. That triggered a tsunami that washed over cities and towns up and down the coast. Nearly 16,000 people died. About 3,000 went missing. The disaster sparked a triple meltdown at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Workers have been struggling ever since to bring it under control. Decommissioning the plant will take about 40 years. Their biggest challenge is how to remove spent fuel rods from reactor pools. Their work is hampered by dangerously high radiation inside the reactors. The operator aims to start extracting melted uranium fuel from reactors 1, 2 and 3 within 10 years. But first, employees of Tokyo Electric Power Company have to locate cracks in the containment vessels to fill the vessels with water and cool down the fuel. They're using endoscopes and robots to do the job. A hydrogen explosion severely damaged reactor 4. That left it fragile and possibly unstable. Workers have been performing tests in order to remove the rods in December next year. But debris is still scattered in the pool, and that could slow down the operation. TEPCO managers have had a tough time attracting workers. They say they'll run out of help in five years unless they can find a way to reduce workers' exposure to radiation. Subcontractors at the stricken Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are struggling to get regular medical checkups. The health ministry halted subsidies for the checkups last December. That's when the government declared that the plant's reactors had been stabilized. During the depths of the crisis, the ministry designated the fight to bring the reactors under control as emergency work. It said plant workers were at risk from high levels of radiation. A subsidy program for subcontractors was set up to pay for the checkups. The December declaration removed the emergency designation. That disqualified workers from getting the subsidy if their cumulative level of radiation stayed below government set levels. New workers are not covered either. But more than 180 workers were exposed to a cumulative radiation dose of more than 50 millisieverts as of July after the declaration. Many cannot get the checkups without financial support from their employers. This worker is in his 30s. His cumulative radiation dose is 60 millisieverts. But last December, it was just 15 millisieverts, so he's disqualified from the health checkup subsidy. What the fuck? You... <laughs> the ministry must think workers are dispensable. Nobody would want to start working at the plant. The health ministry says jobs at the Fukushima plant can no longer be considered emergency work. The health ministry says jobs at the Fukushima plant can no longer be considered emergency work. What the fuck? That means workers should be treated the same as at any other nuclear plant. That means workers should be treated the same as at any other nuclear plant. TEPCO managers have had a tough time attracting workers. They say they'll run out of help in five years unless they can find a way to reduce workers' exposure to radiation. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has released photographs that may fill in the picture of what happened there. Tokyo Electric Power Company released 600 photos taken soon after the disaster. Company spokespersons say a lack of in-house coordination delayed the release of the images. Members of a diet panel investigating the accident pointed to the presence of the images. TEPCO managers say they asked employees and contractors to contribute the photos. Some of the pictures show workers fleeing just after the earthquake. Others show pools of water in rooms that house the power sources for two of the reactors. TEPCO spokespersons say they don't believe the photos will directly affect their investigations into the accident. People in Japan have been debating nuclear energy since last year's Fukushima disaster. The government is promising to review how the country sources its power. The draft of its new energy policy calls for a non-nuclear Japan, but it insists on using nuclear reactors as a transitional measure. The draft says the government will take various measures and direct resources so that all reactors in Japan will be halted by the 2030s. This implies that the government will do its best to promote renewable energy.
The government's future energy policy will be based on three principles. Limiting the operation of any nuclear plant to 40 years, the resumption of operations of plants to only those confirmed to be safe by the nuclear regulatory panel, and no building of new reactors. The draft also says reprocessing plants for spent nuclear fuel in northern Japan will continue to operate. It adds that the government will find a location for the final disposal of nuclear waste. Sometimes I just think funny things. <laughs> Fukushima peaches sold overseas after 18 months. Peaches grown in Fukushima are being sold overseas for the first time since exports were halted because of the nuclear crisis 18 months ago. The first shipment was sent to Thailand. About 900 peaches were displayed on Wednesday in a fruit shop at a department store in Bangkok. Some shoppers purchased the peaches after enjoying a free sample. One woman who bought the fruit said she wasn't worried about radioactive contamination because she heard safety checks had been carried out. She said the peaches are sweet and delicious. An official from Fukushima said exports resumed after the prefecture invited Thai retailers to inspect peach farms and sites where radiation checks are conducted. Agricultural and marine products from Fukushima were halted after the nuclear accident due to fears of radioactive contamination. Katsal Hakonaj of the Fukushima Prefectural Trade Promotion Council said he is happy to see the products being sold abroad again. He said his organization will do more to boost the sale of peaches. Officials in Fukushima say the peaches will be sold in Thailand until the end of the week. They will consider an additional shipment depending on demand, and say they also hope to resume peach exports to other other Asian countries.
TEPCO managers have had a tough time attracting workers. They say they'll run out of help in five years unless they can find a way to reduce workers' exposure to radiation. Subcontractors at the stricken Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are struggling to get regular medical checkups. The health ministry halted subsidies for the checkups last December. That's when the government declared that the plant's reactors had been stabilized. During the depths of the crisis, the ministry designated the fight to bring the reactors under control as emergency work. It said plant workers were at risk from high levels of radiation. A subsidy program for subcontractors was set up to pay for the checkups. The December declaration removed the emergency designation. That disqualified workers from getting the subsidy if their cumulative level of radiation stayed below government set levels. New workers are not covered either. But more than 180 workers were exposed to a cumulative radiation dose of more than 50 millisieverts as of July after the declaration. Many cannot get the checkups without financial support from their employers. This worker is in his 30s. His cumulative radiation dose is 60 millisieverts. But last December, it was just 15 millisieverts, so he's disqualified from the health checkup subsidy. <laughs> The ministry must think workers are dispensable. Nobody would want to start working at the plant. The health ministry says jobs at the Fukushima plant can no longer be considered emergency work. That means workers should be treated the same as at any other nuclear plant.